It's Tuesday, just for Shelley, and it's the 13th, and we're doing, well, we did polar coordinates. We're going to talk about um, polar area, actually. This all goes together. This is all one big mess, so I'm just going to do this for two days. I'm going to start with polar area. All right, let's talk about that. Now, way back when, when we defined radians in the first grade, when did you figure out radians for the first time? Uh, tenth grade. Tenth grade? All right. Well, you remember stuff like this. Let's see, where am I? Boom. Uh, let's say we had a cycle. Where's my cycle? There it is. Let's make it circular. And I don't know, let's throw in a coordinate system for, I don't know why, just for the hell of it. Okay. And let's say I wanted uh, to talk about uh, angle from zero radians to, I don't know, however many radians that is, I don't know, pi over three, whatever it is, right? And we gave the stuff names. We said, well, if this is r and this is theta, this is s. Do you remember this stuff? Yeah. This, what's the relationship? This is the definition of the radian, by the way. S equals r theta, right, if theta is measured in radians. In other words, what's one radian? This is the definition of the radian. S is the arc length of the circle, this much of the circle, right? But what's one radian? When is theta going to be one? When s and r are the same. If theta alone is s divided by r, if s and r are the same, then theta is one. So if S is like, I don't know, 5 inches and R is 5 inches, this angle is 1 radian. That's how big a radian is. I forget, it's somewhere around 53 degrees or something, if you convert it to degrees. Okay? All right, great. But that's fine. But that's not what I'm talking about today. Today I'm going to be talking about the area of a sector, which is related to this, which you should have talked about this in the first grade too. Let's talk about it. Let's say I have two rays. Where's my rays? Okay. This is still R, but now theta is here in between. And I want the area of the sector. This little piece, it's called a sector. Whenever you eat pizza pie, you're eating sectors, right? How many sectors in a pizza pie? Eight, right? Okay. So a pizza slice is a sector where theta is pi over 4, 45 degrees, isn't it? That's why there's eight of them in 360 degrees. Okay. But do you know how to get this area? There is a formula related to this stuff based on radians for this exact area. Do you know it? The area of a sector? No? I'll let you know. It's one-half r squared theta. Which is convenient because if theta is the whole circle, 2 pi, what happens to the 2s? So you get pi r squared is the area of the whole circle, right? This is the area of just a piece of the circle called a sector, okay? Now, why is that important? Because now we can make Riemann arguments for areas bounded by polar curves. Instead of making rectangles which approach the area under a curve, but there's a little error, an overestimate or underestimate, we're going to <coughs> estimate the area of, in a polar graph with little sectors of a circle. Now, the polar graph may not be a circle, so that may be an over or underestimate. This area might be a little bit too big or a little bit too small compared to the actual polar area we're trying to get. But remember, this is a Riemann statement. We're going to say a little slice, a little DA, a little very thin slice, a very thin sector where theta is really, really small, is going to be one-half r squared d theta. Okay? So if we let this slice be like infinitesimally thin, where theta is really, really, really small, we can talk about really, really small piece of, of circular area. But we're going to use that to approximate polar areas. Okay? Are you ready? That's the game plan today. We're going to talk about area today and probably um, slope a little bit too, along the polar curve. All right? Here's a perfect question for this. 93 BC4. Here we go. 93 BC4 says, let R of theta equal, um, what is it, 2 sine 3 theta? Okay? 
So there you go. Now, do you recall that shape from Friday? We talked about this. Do you know which one that is? Is that a lemon escape? Is that a limousine? Is that a rose? Is that a something we don't know? A rose with how many petals? Three. Okay, part A is graph it. All right, now in 93, we, had, we didn't have graphing calculators. How the heck are you going to graph this? 93, we actually had scientific calculators. Okay, two is the amplitude, so the biggest value of R is two. That's how long the pedal can be. Okay, that's good. Right, if you have sine, it's got 90 degree axis symmetry. That's valid for sine of just theta. It may be more complicated for three theta, because remember, there's so many trig identities. Sine of three theta may be rewritable in terms of cosine or something. So that three might mess up the symmetry. OK, that could be a problem. But it might have 90 degree axis or vertical axis symmetry. OK, that's good to know. And we have three petals. All right, so how would you draw it if that's the case? How does it have to look if all that you said is correct? Let's see. Let's draw. Let's try and draw. And then we'll check it with how, because we do have a graphing calculator uh, in the 21st century, don't we? All right. So if it has 90 degree symmetry, it's a rose with three petals. 90 degree axis symmetry, right? And the longest petal is two units long. What do you think it looks like? Does it go like this? No. No, that would be polar axis symmetry. Does it go like this? No, no that would be pole, ac pole symmetry with the origin. It would have to go like this, wouldn't it? Let's see, let's draw that. Well, yeah, wait, I got my, my slopes are all messed up. Let's see. See, I. I messed up. What? I flipped what? Well, I can't draw this stupid thing, damn it. Why can't I draw this? Okay, I'm just going gonna, gonna to cheat, okay? I'm going to put a pedal here. I'm going to put a pedal here. It's all connected, right? I'm going to put a pedal here, okay? Fine. And pretend it's symmetrical, okay? Look, it's not art class, okay? Yeah. Okay, it's the Mickey Mouse curve, okay? Looks like Mickey Mouse with the big ears. Something like that. All right, so the maximum uh, length for R is two units, and it has y-axis symmetry, well, vertical axis symmetry. This is the pole. This is the polar axis. This really isn't here. This really isn't here. This really isn't here, okay? Now, are we right? Well, I don't know. Let's check. Let's go over to Hal and graph it in polar mode and see. All right, so apparently I'm not in polar mode. Huh? Well, if you if you have pole symmetry, vertical symmetry, right? This point reflects to this point. This point reflects to this point. This point reflects to this point. This point reflects to that point. We're good. Well, yeah, but it's a different function. So how are we going to get the area of that? I don't know. Anyway, let's go into polar and go into y equals, and we're going to clear this and clear this and just put in what they gave you: two sine three theta. 3 theta. There's theta, remember? All righty. Now, do you have any idea where you are on here? In other words, what's theta min and what's theta max to get this whole graph? Well, if I plug in theta is 0, I get the sine is 0, right? What's the sine of 0? 0. Sine of 0 is 0 times 2 is 0, right? So when I plug in 0 for theta, I get 0 for r. You're at the pole. All right, what if you plug in some uh, angles that you know? I don't know, pi over 3. When you're at 60 degrees, pi over 3 radians, plug in pi over 3, what do you get? What's a 3 times pi over 3? That's pi. What's a sine of pi? That's 0 again. So you're back at the pole. So it takes from 0 to pi over 3 to get back to the pole. And then from pi over 3 to 2 pi over 3 to get back to the pole. And then 2 pi over 3 to 3 pi over 3 to get back to the pole. OK? Did I say that right? I, I'm not sure if I said that right. So do I have to, all right, what's theta min, what's theta max? Let's find out. Let's go into window. This says from 0 to 2 pi for theta min and theta max, and pi over 24 is a nice trace. 
Um, that's uh, Zoom 4. Uh, sounds good. Let's try it. Hmm. See, it's still busy. Did you see that? It was still busy after it finished graphing up to here. So 2 pi is too much. Let's see. What if we put on... Can we put the bouncing ball on this thing? Uh, where's, where's style? F6, right? Let's see where it is. Let's put the uh, path animate. That's both. Okay, let's see where the bouncing ball is. One pedal, two pedals, three pedals, too much. Too much, too much. So what if I want the whole thing? I'm not going from zero to two pounds.